My name is Sam Harlow. We're going to be talking today, um, Melody Rude and I, about taking over OER, evolving an established OER program. And this is a lightning talk for Open Education Conference 2020, which is virtual. So I am Sam Harlow. I'm the online learning librarian, but I'm also a liaison librarian to community and therapeutic recreation, public health education, and kinesiology. And my pronouns are she, her, hers. And my name is Melody Rude. I am the Student Success Librarian, as well as the liaison to the International and Global Studies Program and the Library and Information Science Program. And my pronouns are also she, hers, hers. All right, so um, just quickly some background information about uh, how we got to the point where we took over uh, the OER program at UNCG. So the uh, UNCG OER program was established by the Associate Dean in Technical Services and Scholarly Communications. So she ran all aspects of the OER efforts, including the marketing, the grant, statewide partnerships, um, as well as many other things. So in 2014, in partnership with the Provost's Office, uh, UNCG Libraries established the OER mini grants, and there have been six cohorts to date. So the associate dean who uh, established this work at UNCG uh, left in the fall of 2019, and the OER mini grant and initiatives shifted to a new department. So it shifted from technical services to the uh, public serving department of research outreach and instruction. And that work is a collaborative effort between two liaison librarians. Um, myself and Sam, so the online learning librarian as well as the student success librarian. So one of the steps that we took to evolve the OER program was to uh, really take a closer look at our communication and marketing. Um, so what needed to be updated and what we could add. So a couple of things that we did was um, um, we involved uh, collaborations between liaison librarians, instructional technologists, the director of marketing um, at UNCG libraries, as well as other people. Um, additionally, we created flyers and blurbs and redesigned the OER LibGuide by updating and cleaning up some of that information. But a major change that we um, did for the OER LibGuide was that we uh, expanded the OER by subject page, which included a whole new workflow. In addition, we created a site specifically for the OER mini grants that gave information about the grant, the cohorts, related webinars, and why one might consider using open educational resources. So here's just a couple of examples of some of the um, marketing that we created uh, for um, the OER initiatives, and we created these in Canva. Okay, so it's Sam again, and I'm going to be talking about how we evolved the OER mini grant. Um, so it continued. The grant is a $1,000 stipend to faculty that uh, they get for eliminating a textbook from their course. So we, of course, encourage them to use OER materials, um, but that is not a requirement as long as they eliminate a textbook. Um, so it's a great initiative in order to save our students money, but as well as track um, how much money we have saved for our students over time, because this is a partnership with our provost office. So having those kind of assessment numbers is helpful. So we kept the logistics of the grant pretty much exactly the same, right? The $1,000 stipend to eliminate a textbook um, by any means possible. But we did kind of clean up the communication and marketing of the grant. We did decide to have a full week dedicated to OER in January, even beyond the regular OER week that we uh, that happens in the fall for all libraries, where we do a series of programmings about it, programming about it that Melody is going to talk about um, in a little bit. But we also made a website purely dedicated to the OER mini grant that helps us cleanly market the grant, right? That's where we can put our blurbs, our flyers, um, in order to keep it all in one place. Um, but it also tracks and shows our past winners. Um, and then ideally one day it will serve as a place to link to syllabi and course materials of past winners, um, as well as um, kind of uni make a uniform assessment of that. So here is a screenshot of our OER mini grants uh, website. Um, and there is the go link if you want to go check it out yourself. And you can see it's divided into home, um, a little bit of why OER advocacy, past grant winners, and then other grant opportunities about OER in North Carolina um, going on in case they miss out on this one and want to try another one. 
So we also added in more training and support for the grant. Uh, so we built a workshop for librarians, two virtual workshops this summer on finding and creating OER, and then we housed all the materials in a Canvas community or organization. Um, so this was based on feedback from liaisons. They didn't really know how to best support faculty who win OER mini grants. Um, we also work with instructors um, through creating a series of online OER tutorials um, on create and find right now where they can produce a certificate if they do all the tutorials about open educational resources. So we also um, work with students by offering more instruction to open pedagogy courses where we do an introduction to OER with students in these courses. Um, so far it's been mostly undergraduate, but we do work with our LIS program here as well. And this is an example of an activity we did with our liaison librarians to help them kind of look through uh, OER repositories in their area. Uh, so you can see we had them find an, o an OER material in their area and then put in these Creative Commons licenses, which ones was it, and then quickly review it. All right, so some programming ideas. So um, Sam did mention some of the programs um, that we added. Um, so uh, we did recognize Open Access Week with um, some marketing. You saw one of the flyers earlier that asked students, you know, what would you buy if you didn't have to spend your money on expensive textbooks? That's something that students like to engage with. Um, we also did the Open Educational Resources Week um, that sort of led up to the deadline for our grant. And this was a week that had um, workshops and um, a panel discussion, and that was you know, there was an open pedagogy webinar that we hosted for faculty and librarians, as well as uh, workshops for faculty and librarians who are specifically interested in um, applying for those grants, as well as just learning about OER. And then we also had a panel of past grant winners um, that sort of talked about their experiences and, um, you know, maybe some lessons learned, what they would like to do next time, as well as an opportunity for them to answer questions for people who are interested in applying in the future. And then finally, we added an event that was student-centered. So we really wanted to get students a part of this conversation. So we created this Valentine's Day OER pop-up event. And basically what it was, was on Valentine's Day, we set up a table with some treats, some hot cocoa and coffee, um, as well as resources about open educational resources. And we just handed those out as students walked by. So, Here's a couple of images from that event. On the left here, we have our um, Valentine's Day card that we created that says, wish you could break up with expensive textbooks, fall in love with OERs. And then on the back, there's information about what OER means, um, how you know textbook prices have risen over the past 40 years, and so on. And then we also included some OER uh, conversational candy hearts to those um, cards there. And then on the right here, we have um, just a really sweet image of uh, some of the first students who uh, stopped by our table after we were done setting up. Okay, so of course we would like to make other changes to our OER programming and um, move it forward together. So we mentioned the OER tutorials. Right now we currently have one on um, OER, finding OER materials, and creating OER materials. We are working on an o teaching with OER materials that will include um, the social justice connection, and we plan on working with our university teaching and learning commons and um, getting ingrained within equity, diversity, and inclusion workshops with our instructors to show how OER um, can be used for social justice and EDI within classrooms, um, as well as open pedagogy training. So we are involved and would like to continue to be involved with OER statewide um, initiatives. We work, we're working currently with the UNC system on creating course materials, open course materials for large enrollment courses um, that are mostly in the STEM at this point, as well as creating an overall statewide uh, OER education programming through webinars, as well as training materials. Um, we'd like to continue working with students, um, maybe continuing that to student advocacy groups. Um, we also have formed an open access OER um, librarian working group, but it would be nice if maybe we could take a group like that to Faculty Senate and work with instructors on these issues as well. 
So um, we'd like to better collect what our faculty are doing with OER. So we'd like to kind of come up with a more unified form of assessment for the OER mini grants, as well as better collect the what they're doing in these OER open courses or textbook free courses, um, including their syllabi, as well as open materials and getting permission from them to be able to put it on the website so that other people can learn from what they're doing um, to kind of close the open loop in that way. And then of course, um, open pedagogy has been doing really well at UNCG. We are a minority serving Pell Grant eligible institutions. So um, student success is at, our, is at the forefront, as Melody has mentioned. And uh, being able to kind of uh, engage students with openness through open pedagogy is something that uh, we want to continue doing as well as expand it out even further. And that's it. Um, my name, again, is Sam Parlow. Um, our, my email address here and also Melody's contact information here as well. So be sure to email us if you have any questions. And uh, thanks for listening to our lightning talk. Thank you.